Okay, we're going to talk today a little bit about the uh, Dogtra IQ uh, dog uh, e-collar. This is the uh, neck assembly that actually goes on the dog. Uh, this is the handheld device that you actually control, how you control uh, activating the different um, elements that make up the collar. And then the last thing you have is the uh, charger. And the charger has this, and on the end it has two prongs. Um, each one, when you want to charge these, go right in to the individual devices. So in the case of the, the handheld device, it's here. Make sure it's pressed in all the way. Uh, when it's plugged in and charging, you'll see red. In that case, it means it's not fully charged. When it turns green right there, it means it's fully charged. So um, Also, make sure when you take this out, you close this uh, flap all the way, okay? As you can see there, it's closed now. That is actually going to help uh, with making sure it stays waterproof and it's sealed. So this handheld is actually waterproof. It can get rained on. It just can't be dipped in the water. Um, and then the second part is the neck uh, collar assembly, which you see here. And that has the same type of thing on the back. And there's a plug, which you see, make sure you plug it all the way in. You'll see the red light. And this one is charged, so it should turn green right away. Okay, so it is charged. Same thing. When you unplug it, make sure that you close that flap all the way. Okay? Now, how do you turn this thing on? Well, to activate it, you'll see there's a red dot. See that red dot right in the middle of the hand, uh, hand device? There's also a red dot on the side of the, uh, the collar. So what you do is you take those two dots and you put them together just for a second and you see it went green. To double check it's on, you're going to hit the bottom button right here, this third one at the bottom, and see if this vibrates. You can hear it vibrating so you know it's working. To turn it off, you're going to do the same thing. There's two red dots. Put them together for a second. Take them apart. You can check and make sure it's off by pressing the button again. No vibration. Okay? So I'm going to turn this on. Put the dots together. And double check it's on. Okay, you can see when I press the button on the handheld, it goes green. It says it's activated. And this also goes green. The other two buttons are for the electronic parts, uh, the electronic stimuli, which is activated by these two prongs here. So when you put those two prongs on your dog, you have to make sure that they are touching firmly. If they're loose and just touching slightly, it will not activate, and you'll wonder why you're dialing up the power and the dog's not reacting. What can happen also is it's loose, the dog shifts, it starts touching, and you're all the way up at a high um, electronic stimuli level and you get a huge yelp jump you know overstimulation um, so what you want to make sure is when you put this collar on make sure it's tight to the point where those are definitely those two electrodes are definitely kind of pushing into the dog's neck uh, you know not too hard but make sure that those those top areas are definitely you know like this. I don't know if you can see that. They're pressing in. Uh, like they're pressing into my fingers. Okay, if not, they're too loose. If they're like this, and you'll wonder why it's not working. So, you're going to try at first to use the vibrate setting to see how your dog reacts. Okay, once again, vibrate. You can hear it, and you'll feel that it's shaking. It's just the box kind of um, vibrates. You want to see how your dog reacts to that. Um, you know, and try to use it when you're actually trying to get them to, uh, you know, respond, say stop barking or stop going, you know, after a particular item or whatever it is. When you use the electronic um, stimuli, you can see the dial here, okay? Start off with the dial all the way down at zero, which looks like that, okay? Make sure it's on. Most dogs usually don't feel anything to about 20. So you can go, I'd say go up to 15 or 20 as a starting point. The other two buttons, C and N, 
um, activate the electronic stim stimulator. So I use the middle one predominantly because as you can see when I press it, the green light goes on. So as long as I hold that, that um, stimulation is, is coming through the collar, okay? Um, if I had both fingers on and touching, you can kind of feel what that feels like. Usually I like to have people try and see how it feels on themselves dialing it up from zero. It feels a lot like a TENS unit if you've ever experienced one of those. Um, so I use that. The other one is the NIC. I don't really use that because you can see when I press that top button, it just gives a quick pull so you can see the green light bump and that's it. So I personally like, never use the NIC. I like to control the length um, of the stimulation. So if your dog is barking, and it starts barking, it goes roof, 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 you hold it down, roof, 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 they stop barking, you let go. Okay, so once again, if they're barking at the door, admit the second they bark, you know, time it. They start barking, roof, and you're there. Roof, 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 they stop and it goes away. So they start thinking that barking um, or going after a certain item is what's causing it, not you, okay? You know, if your dog starts, bark, starts barking, you can say, hey, leave it or stop. And if they don't, that's your warning to let them know that there's something going to happen, not from you, but just from them actually barking. So they bark, roof, 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 stop. They don't, roof, 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 roof. They stop and you let go. You can also try this initially with just the vibrate and see how they react. The reaction that you want is one of confusion and stop and move away. You don't want a dog to jump up in the air, yelp, anything of that nature. So you do have to find between zero and 100, which I've never had to use on a dog. Maybe up to 60 is as high as I've had to go on a dog that's, you know, seriously aggressive with another dog or whatever it may be. So you want to dial it up from zero and find out where that, that sweet spot is, that you get the reaction you want. Um, and, you know, Peanut, my dog, is about a 30, so, and she's fairly sensitive. So, you want to start maybe around 15 or 20 and dial it up um, to see what that sweet spot is. Sometimes dogs at rest, relaxed, will have a different um, level as opposed to when they're seeing, you know, what I call a high-value distraction. Um, so, you'll have to find what that high-value distraction level is, and whenever needed, you can dial back up to that and get get what you need. So hopefully that helps you out and uh, alright have a good day.